Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 where I've been getting on with the Naquium processing and this has been quite a big job. It's, there's a little bit more to it than just dropping in a mine like that and getting it started. Uh, so let's have a look through what's, what's been going on over here. So this is out on Stardust, which is our, the asteroid field we've decided to use because it has decent amounts of Naquium and isn't too far away from Kalidus and Norvis. Um, so we've been set, I've been setting up here, uh, flying out with my with my little exploration ship here, and also with the bigger cargo ship that's been uh, do, doing some runs out here. And th and this has allowed us to get things up and running to to a reasonable extent. So we started off. The first thing I did was get the battery charger systems working over here. So the the train the, the um, space trains run on batteries, uh, unlike the unlike normal trains which run on burnable fuels. So they'll take in these um, space train power packs and then they'll turn them into space train discharged power packs. And those can then be loaded in, unloaded, and, they, and the idea is that the um, the discharged ones will be put into these machines where they'll then get turned into they'll get charged up again and in theory they'll get passed back out again by this inserter but at the moment the uh, the belt seems to be full. But that's okay. Um, the reason it's got the re I think once the uh, the train uses a few more we'll be able to put some more of the, uh, the, bat dead, the live batteries in here and then unload some more dead batteries and that'll create more room for, the, for this for this to all flow round and round as, uh, as we want it to and so this is a sort of a few stage process we've got I've got I've got the um, I've got the charging setups here, around here on all of the trains to have now been able to send this one off to go and get the iron ore which is now being cooked into iron plates here this one's been able to go off and get ice which we can then turn into water for generating power and making sulfuric acid and, and so on and so on so this is all working really quite nicely and I've put in the same sort of basic battery charging system for all of the all of these trains so in th they're probably all going to be in about the same situation where they're, got, where they're full of um, charged batteries and the discharged batteries can then be passed out into here where they'll be charged up and they'll go round and round. And there is, in theory, a supply of new batteries coming in here. These are the ones that have been brought in from uh, from Norvis by, by the spaceships. They're being brought out on, on a belt from here, but we've, we've run out of them right now. And that's okay, we've got enough here to keep the system running for a while, but eventually they'll start to degrade and die and we'll need to bring in replacements. So we'd like to have a supply of them available on the belt over here, but it's not urgent. We can, we can wait quite a long time before, for that to happen. One thing I have forgotten is that these chargers will also sometimes fail. So you can see over here there's a 99% uh, chance of them recharging the battery properly, but a 1% chance of them producing a broken power pack instead. And those power packs need to be taken back to uh, back to Norvis and recycled. And so I'll need to put in some belts and some filter inserters around here just to make sure they're getting they're getting taken away and brought up and probably just dumped onto the um, onto this belt here that will then flow across into the spaceship over here and we can and allow it to be taken away. So that's it, it, it's mostly working, but I. I forgot the final step of it. I did quite a lot of thinking about where I wanted my space, what routes I wanted my spaceships to take. So at the moment we've got we've got three essentially three areas that are relevant to the to the, to the uh, delivery of Naquium. Uh, there's Norvis orbit, uh, so around this planet here, and this is where all of our supplies are available because it's our main our main factory because it's the starter planet. So we just built everything there essentially. Uh, so and we want to do all of the science in orbit around this planet, and we've also got all the resources available here. Uh, we've also got. Talos out here, which is where we want to do the processing. And that's because the Naquium, as you can see here, and I talked about last week, requires a certain amount of beryllium sulfate, which is a liquid. And so we don't want to be shipping that around if we can avoid it. And that's made on Talos as part of the uh, production of the beryllium. So in here, we one, one of the steps is we make we make beryllium beryllium sulfate? Beryllium hydroxide, sorry, that's the uh, that's the one. So we're making that here. So I thought it makes sense to do all of the um, all the all the naquitum processing here. And so that means we need to bring the crushed naquitite from from uh, Stardust, which is way out in the interstellar area, to here in order to be processed. We also need to bring the na the processed Naquium from Talos to Norvis in order to be used for, for science. And we need to bring lots and lots of supplies from Norvis to Talos for that processing. Again, there's all of the, all the different things you can see down here. And we also need to bring supplies from Norvis out to um, out to Stardust for doing the first stage of the processing and for the mining. So th there were various different possibilities I thought of. One of them, the most interesting but probably least practical, so the, the most complicated and potentially most interesting way I thought of of doing it was to have a ship leave from Norbit with all of the raw resources that are going to be required for all of the processing. So things like holmium cable and vitalic acid and lots and lots of sulfur and and, and, that, and cryonite and, and vulcanite and, and so on. Fly from Norbit out to Talorbit, unload all the things that are needed here and then carry on with lots of sulfur and iridium and then carry on out to, um, to Stardust then pick up all the crushed naquitite there, fly back to Talos, unload the crushed naquitite, and then fly back to Norbit in order to then reload with every, unload the um, the naquium that would be made on Talos, and then reload with all the resources that are required. And this 
We probably could have made this work, but I suspect it would have been a bit fiddly and there'd be a bit of a risk of a ship getting stuck somewhere because there was too much or not enough of a resource somewhere and it, it seemed a bit a bit fragile and also it'd be a little bit tricky to work out whether the ship was on the outbound route when it got to Talos or the homebound route. Uh, I'm sure we'd be able to work that out based on the contents of the ship or, or some sort of memory cell or something like that, but it's an extra complication that we'd have had to think about. The second possibility is to have a ship go from Norbit to, to, to Talorbit, carrying all of the resources that are required for, to, to, for use on Talos to make an aquarium, and all of the sulphur, and then have a, a second ship that goes from Talorbit out to uh, Stardust and carries all of the sulphur and iridium from there out and brings the crushed aquatype back. That's possible, but it has a similar problem with the first idea, in that we, we'd be rel relying on the ship that comes from Norbit to bring enough sulphur out for everything that's required over here, and that's a lot of sulphur. The third option, and the one we eventually decide to go for, is to have a, sea a ship that just does this jump from, from Norbit to Talorbit, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that's going to carry out the things that are needed to make the na to turn the crushed Naquitite into Naquium, and then also then bring the Naquium back to Norvis. So that's going to be re that's gonna be a relatively straightforward ship. And then have a second ship that goes to Norbit to pick up the Iridium and the Sulphur that's required to get the uh, crushed Naquitite. And then fly out to Stardust in order to drop all that off and pick up the crushed Naquitite. Then fly back, drop that off at Talos, and then go back to Norvis to restock. So that's what we decided on in the end. And by we, I mostly mean I, but uh, I, I did take input from other people as well. Because this seemed like the simplest and most reliable way. And the sheer amount of sulphur that needs to be transported around is a bit of a, puts a bit of a damper, in my opinion, on trying to supply everything with a single ship. Another possibility to make this slightly more complicated is to take the, the uh, Talos ship that already exists, that's currently parked in Norvis orbit, trying to unload all its beryllium, and use that one to bring the Naquium back as well. Uh, I've pretty much decided against that. Partly because this ship isn't going to go anywhere for quite a long time, because we've got so much beryllium that we're just not really using but also because it'd be rather difficult to fit in the additional station here for the unloading of the um, of, the, of the of the purple stuff and also i feel like there's there's also a, a, a niceness of, of keeping the various different processes a little bit more separate I, c I could do it with fewer spaceships but it's not difficult to put in lots of spaceships so I, I think i'll probably just go for doing it the easy way and so i then spent quite a lot of time setting up the uh, ship here for stardust and so loading in all the various different things that are needed uh, and so as you can see in here we've got the uh, the iridium and we've got the batteries for the space for the space trains, and we've got loads and loads of sulfur, and we've got a couple of other things that I'll talk about a bit a little bit later on. Uh, so those are all being loaded into the into the spaceship. I set up the programming here and uh, got in a bit of trouble with Tristan because I did big copy paste across here uh, from the Ollie Rand spaceship, and so I ended up with a station with the wrong name and it, it stole a train and yada yada. We'll talk about that in a little while. Um, but anyway, and so the idea is that this spaceship will now be able to take out all of the resources that are required in Stardust and then bring back the uh, the Naquitite, the crushed Naquitite, and drop that off at Talos on the way home. And so, the ship will then land here in Stardust, it will unload. As we've got the system down here to, to make the sulfuric acid from the sulphur that's coming in that we've now run out of because there's only so much we had on in the ship. But the ship is on its way out again, I believe, and so eventually it'll stop off here and maybe we'll have enough. And we've got the iron coming in from processing down here. I also dropped in this... Um, wide area beacon because it, it, I discovered that uh, these machines weren't running fast enough. Now I think part of that is because we uh, have such a high demand for um, sulfuric acid at the start because we had to prime all the systems, get a load that shipped out there and so on, uh, fill up trains, that sort of thing. So it's quite possible in the future without it'll be fine without this beacon but you know I've put it in there now, it's, it's fairly cheap, okay it's going to be using a massive amount of power but that doesn't matter, power is incredibly cheap. So okay the drills are using a load of power there, we can see that uh, yeah, the beacon's using a bit of power. It, it doesn't matter. Pa power is cheap, so we don't we don't really care. We've got this. Uh, we've got the system down here with the beam receiver that, as you can see, is still at ten thousand degrees C. It's currently cooking, uh, cooked nicely, and it's keeping everything powered through the uh, steam turbine here. So yes, I'm not worried about power. We have generation capacity or uh, to produce a gigawatt, and we're using less than ten percent of that so far. So I think we're absolutely fine out here at the moment for power. The sulfuric acid is then passed up this pipe. The first mine up here is linked in simply by pipe and then a and, and a bell along here because to be honest it is close enough there's no point in running a train from here to here that's just ridiculous it's easier just to run a run a belt down here and run a pipe back up to take the take the acid out and so that's working quite nicely as you can see it's filled up here and that's all flowed down here, and then we ran into some problems, but I'll talk about those a bit more in a, in a, in a few minutes. When this mine was running, it, to be honest, even with even with the, uh, the, the the beacon in here and all these speed modules, it's not quite filling a single a, a single space belt. That's why I've only bothered putting in one belt along here. And this system down here is spec'd to run off four belts of constant throughput. Now, I don't think we're going to get to that point for quite a long time. We're, uh, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit ambitious, but 
I was pretty sure this wasn't going to be enough. So I did some more exploring and scanning of the um, of the Stardust area. Uh, a part of it was done manually, and part, and then I thought, hang on a minute, let's do let's do this the easy way, and I automated it. And so last last time I had already found this patch out here. So I've dropped in a station here. I've now hooked all of this up. We've got the same sort of mines in here. I haven't bothered putting in the speed modules, but this does fill up reasonably quickly. As you can see, we've now got uh, 5,100 in here or 512 stacks. Uh, that is a full warehouse and only and, and slightly more than the train. So the trains are triggered, a uh, set up to to be to uh, be sent over when we get over 4,000 in here. Because yes, despite the train being this long, it still only stores 4,000 naquitites uh, because. It only stacks up to 10. So bring the train in, it'll, it'll pick it up from over here, it'll, it'll head over automatically and then pick pick up the Nacrotite and bring it over here. Now the reason it stopped here is because the train is also configured to wait until it's full of um, sulfuric acid. So it'll wait in the station until it's full of acid and empty of Nacrotite. Then it'll head over to the other station and then fill up with Nacrotite and come back again. Um, there was some concern expressed on stream as to whether there's there's a risk of the, of the station down here running out of sulfuric acid and therefore not being able to produce enough Nacrotite to fill up the station and therefore never being able to call, call a train and the whole thing falling over. And yes, there is a sort of an outside possibility of that, but if I send a train out to, to just dump a, load of, dump a train load of acid and then clear off without picking up any naquium, a train load of acid is 90,000 sulfuric acid. So each of these takes 30,000, so we get 90,000 in there. And I think I remember needing about 80,000 or maybe slightly less in order to dig up an entire train's worth of, um, of naquium. And so you can see over here, this has run back and forth a, a, a few times, I think, I'm not sure exactly how many but it has it's run run a little bit and we've got 93,000 in this in in the tank here and and it's been enough to, it's had in, and that is after having had enough to dig up enough naquium to fill up or naquitite rather to fill up this this warehouse so the system is working quite well with it set up as it as is um because the, the yeah there's there's more in the train than it, than is required to fill the train with naquitite so each time it goes out there'll be a little bit more left behind each time and so to, to stop this getting a bit too carried away i've put in uh, filters on these these things to make sure they they don't unload more than 100,000 into this tank and so as you can see we'll get up to about 100,000 in here and then the system will sort of stop unloading it because we don't we don't need any more that's quite enough thank you very much uh, and and um, I didn't see any point in just stockpiling enormous quantities of acid out here so that should that should work nicely we'll get a decent amount in the tank and, we'll, and we should always have enough to fill up the uh, fill up the train from from the mines we just need to make sure that each mine when it's initially set up gets primed by having a train sent out there that will just stop drop off some acid and then clear off again so, I've got two Naquium mines, that's not bad, but when it was actually running, this wasn't enough to keep the system running flat out. So, I built some more rail out over this way. There's another patch over here that's 3.2 million, which is quite nice, so I've set up, set up out here. Uh, it looks like I ran out of, um, those are presumably chain signals, yes, I ran out of chain signals, so I'm going to need to try and remember to bring some more of those over. Um, the problem, the only problem out with this is that the colour of rare metals and the colour of Naquitite are very, very similar. They're both kind of purpley. I did eventually learn to tell the difference. This slightly bolder uh, purple is rare metal and the slightly less bold is Naquitite. Um, but so I kept getting excited and thinking, oh, that's a really big patch. Nope, it's rare metals and, and so on. So eventually I um, I got fed up with just sort of scanning around manually. I set the automatic scanning up and I found a really good patch up here. There's 5.8 million there and 4.9 million down here. So we've got more than 10 million between these two. So I think once I decide that this patch isn't enough, and I haven't even set up a mine there yet, but I'll, that's, that's fairly easy to do. Once I've decided that this one actually isn't enough, I'll be extending the rails up here and putting in another station, probably on this this island here. Uh, maybe I'll even pull up these pieces of Nacrotite. Who knows? I probably won't. Uh, and then grabbing these two patches over here, belting them in, and we'll have another nice big station up here that's going to last basically forever. We also had a little bit of a discussion about what's the best way to uh, to module mining drills. So even in space, you can still put productivity modules in a mining drill. So there are th there are three ways you can do it. The first way is to go, I can't be bothered with modules. And this is the cheapest way because you don't have to pay for the modules. And it'll churn through and it'll pull up the amount of uh, the amount the amount of resource that's predicted by the uh, by the by the number written on here. So we get a million out of this one, for example. Uh, and that that works fine. You get you get you get your your resource out. It's, it's okay. I've gone for putting speed modules in because mining up Nacrotite is an incredibly slow process so I thought let's make this go a lot faster try and get the stuff out of the ground quickly so we've got a decent amount flowing through and we'll be able to produce as much Nacrium as we want. I then doubled down on that by putting in a beacon here with speed modules in it as well. The third approach is the one that Mike has gone for, which is where you put productivity modules in your mines instead. And that works. That works. The, the reasoning behind that is because then, then that means that means instead of getting one million Naquitite out of this patch, you'll get 1.4 million out of it because you'll get a 40 percent boost. So you get uh, you get you get a bit more out of the patch, which means you don't have to go out setting up mines quite as often. The mines are a 
a smidge more complicated to put up, and more importantly, they run much more slowly, which means you then need to go out and set up a lot more mines if you want to get the resources flowing through at that specific rate. But those mines will last quite a lot longer, so maybe you'll spend three times as long setting up all of your mining, uh, setting up your mines, but they'll last for four times as long. And so you'll, you you don't have to put quite as much work in in, in the long run. Uh, I've gone for this. I've gone for this method because Naquium comes up so slowly. I decided this was the better way to do do it. But as we'll discuss in uh, the next video, Mike has gone for the opposite one. He's put in the productivity modules because he reckons it's worth saving the time later and having mines that will last for longer. I'm not going to say which method is right, which one's wrong, because to be honest, it's a matter of opinion. Uh, they're both sort of they, are, they they both have their advantages and disadvantages. I I reckon this one is better. He reckons that one's better, and I think possibly part of the reason for that might be that Naquium is a slower thing to mine, and if you're in if you're in space, you tend to get deeper patches of whatever. So you can see we're getting getting eight million we're getting millions of Naquium over here. I suspect his patches are probably not quite as big, and maybe that's so that's maybe part of the reason he's leaning in the other direction. I also suspect you we might get through more iridium than we do naquium and so that is another reason to consider uh, to, to reckon on wanting to get more out of the mines and so from all these mines the uh, the ore is arriving and it's all being brought into the station uh, either via belt or by, by by train which is great and then it's passed out into these uh, pulverizers which are as you can see they are they are pulverizing now the recipe for nacotite crushing as we saw in last week's videos is slightly complicated you also need to fill it fit in iridium plates so that was why there's a supply of iridium being brought out by the spaceship it's then chopped down by this uh, machine down here into the plates they can be passed along here we'll pass them through and I think I did the maths and we should be bringing out enough iridium to be able to then turn in a spaceship's worth of naquatite into or, or to turn naquatite into a spaceship's worth of crushed naquatite. The problem with this system is it has some byproducts. Firstly there's there's the water which is okay that's that's not really a problem. We can we can just loop that back around, make it back into sulfuric acid and and we should be fine there. Now I think I do need to put in some tanks to make sure well actually I have a tank down here which is a sensible amount and we're we're topping that one up to a hundred thousand and as you can see this is at 124,000. So we are generating some water from from the system. I think it's probably going to be okay. We, the, the, I, I, I'm expecting the system to be a slight net negative in amount of water. Um, if it turns out, to, if if that turns out to be wrong, then we'll be in a lot of trouble, and I'll just have to vent it or something, I guess. Um, but generally, I, I would expect that to be okay. So the, the water is not the problem. Getting the iridium plates back again is, isn't a problem either, because those can be just fed out uh, along here, split out on this splitter, pass in over here as a priority input, and so we'll use them up before we use up the brand new naquium plates. So they'll, yeah, they'll go round and round, they'll be recycled. That's absolutely fine. The problematic one is this iridium powder, and there's only a 10% chance of producing it, but that does mean we'll produce a fair amount of it in the long run. As you can see, if you look on these belts here you can see there's, there's quite a few of these plates and then there's also quite a lot of the crushed iridium powder as well so we're going to need to do something about that and that's flowing off down this down these belts over here and I was just dumping that into the spaceship and then I went oh wait a minute I don't want to send that back to Kothar to be reprocessed I don't want to reprocess it on Norbit or Norbit this is all just going to be a headache we don't, I don't want to ship things round and round in circles like that let's just do the reprocessing of all these things on site and there's similar things for the later steps as well where we're going to be producing um, ber beryllium powder which is can be fed back into the machines to be reprocessed uh, because we're going to be doing it on the correct planet there, so that's okay. We're also going to be producing holmium powder, and that's going to be similarly problematic because that's going to be produced on Talos, which doesn't have holmium processing. But I'm going to reprocess it there as well. And similarly, over here, we are now starting to try and reprocess the iridium powder back into iridium blast cake and then iridium ingots, and which can then flow down here and be put back into the into, in, into the system. Lovely. Um, except that we don't have the input, the other ingredients required for this because this was a little bit of an afterthought, and I forgot I was going to require these when. I set the spaceship up the first time and so yes to make to, to deal with the iridium powder you need enriched vulcanite so I've added that's why I've now added some of that onto the spaceship and as you, you saw when I was uh, setting when I was poking around with it over in uh, in Norbit that's an extra thing that I've added in and that was the one I was saying I'll talk about this later so that's going to be passed through into here, uh, and then in order to turn that that uh, iridium blast cake into the the ingots that we want, we're also going to have to produce some pyroflux as well. Okay, so we'll do that up here. Pyroflux and pyroflux is made from vulcanite blocks, so. Okay, we we can we can get both vulcanite. That can be shipped out from uh, from Norbit as well. So that's why there was vulcanite in the spaceship as well. That's, this is where we're going to need it, and also it needs sand. Now, unlike basically every other pulverizing recipe in the entire galaxy. Pulverizing naquium or naquatite doesn't produce sand or stone, and so we couldn't use the byproduct from this stage to make the pyroflux in order to deal with the, the other byproduct from this stage because that would be far too easy. Fortunately, there is a decent-sized stone patch up here. I say decent size; it's, it's less than half a million, but 
I think, to be honest, that's going to be absolutely fine for a good long time. So I've put in a very small slapdash uh, mining outpost over here. It's linked in with, with, with some power lines, and then it's just producing all of the stone in the world. That's fed down another mark belt down to here, because there's no point in putting in a train for that. It's not that far. Uh, and then that's being pulverised down into sand, which we can feed into here, to make the pyroflux, which can come down this pipe to be made to, to allow us to make the ingots. We do need to wait for the spaceship to arrive yet, though, and... Well, it's, it's, it's on its way. It's currently a mere five and a half minutes away, so it's going to be here fairly soon, probably before the end of the episode, so we'll be able to see all this kicking in. But for now, these machines are idle, and that means we've got a backlog building up on the belts over here, and so we haven't got any of the crushed Nacrotite coming through, so generally the whole system has just gone to sleep. But when the spaceship arrives, it'll bring sulfur for making more acid, it'll bring the vulcanite products for making for getting rid of this, this overspill of, um, of, of, the, of the powder, and things should just start working again nicely. I have to admit, my biggest concern with this system is whether having one mechanical facility, one biochem facility, one radiation facility, and one thermodynamics facility is going to be enough to deal with all of the powder that comes out here. Because a 10% chance is it's going to be producing quite a lot of it. Now, I can chuck speed modules in them. I can put I can put another beacon in over here. There are, there are, there are ways and means to make, this, to make the system run a bit faster. But I am a little bit concerned as to whether it is going to be sufficient or not. Um, I can't I can't move this... Ha! <laughs> I was going to say I can't move this across to cover to cover them in it with its um, uh, speed speed effect right distance, but actually, if I ran this water pipe up the other side over here, then I could shuffle all of these across a little bit, and then they would fall inside the uh, the catchment area of the of this beacon, and I could get a load of speed improvements on them for free. That's kind of tempting. Maybe I'll do that, because it, it'll fit. The, uh, there is enough space in there. I might need to move this pipe over to the other side. No, there's actually a decent... There is a decent amount of space there. I think that's very, very doable. I, um... Yeah, I think I might I might do that because it's going to be rather satisfying just to get that under the uh, under under this beacon as well, just to to deal with all of the out outputs and, and and stuff that are produced. The other thing I should mention is that we're down here we ha we're also going to be producing a certain amount of steam from uh, from hit from the uh, making the iridium here. That's going into a turbine, which I'm hoping is going to deal with the steam quickly enough. It'll turn it back into water because it's a condensing turbine, um, and that, so that'll produce a little bit of the power that's required by the uh, by the by the whole system. I'm hoping that there's going to be enough demand on it and there's not going to be too much power produced from down here. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it'll all be absolutely fine. Fingers crossed. The final thing to note that's being brought out by the spaceship is the uh, ammunition for the meteor defense guns. I realized during the last episode or during the last videos, uh, there was, someone pointed out that we'd actually had some meteor strikes in, uh, in in Stardust. So you do actually get them out here. Um, and I noticed a few more during the last stream. So we're now bringing out the meteor defense ammo. I think I've also brought out some meteor defense guns in my spaceship here that's, uh, that's going to allow me to set up my defenses over here and keep this area protected from, from meteor strikes. So that's going to be... That's going to be nice. We don't we don't want to get th anything blown up out here because it's such a faff and to set it all up, and it takes so long to get out here that I'd like to have it uh, all automated and completely safe. And now that the spaceship has arrived, you can see it's unloading all of the uh, the resources I was talking about. So we've got the enriched vulcanite pouring out out over here. We've got some more sulfur coming through, which is good, and a load of iridium. That well, we already had just about enough of that. We don't seem to have got any. Oh, the spaceship has gone again already. That's not good. So the spaceship is not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, you, stop that. Uh, so we, we've noticed that, that some of our spaceships seem to be departing a bit sooner than they should. So this is going to require a bit of investigation. But this one, yes, this, the, this spaceship should not have left then. So we'll send it back to where it, where it belongs and hopefully it'll land. Now we suspect this is because it's it's landing and immediately picking up a signal telling it to uh, pick it, telling it to depart and it's not waiting for long enough. So we need to work out some some way of signaling it to tell it not to do that. So we get, that's going to be something we definitely need to look at look into in the next uh, in the next stream. But in the meantime, well, uh, it'll land again now and hopefully it'll actually stay there this time. Right, yes, that looks slightly more promising. So, the ship is now unloading all of the stuff, as we just discussed. Net, there's some batteries coming out. We've got the enriched vulcanite as well. We've got mountains of sulfur. So that's going to allow us to start making the acid again. This um, enriched sulfur having, sorry, this enriched vulcanite having come through here is going to allow the uh, the blast cake production to start. Now, I've had to, had to ch already chucked a fair amount of um, iridium powder in there, unfortunately. So it's going to be at least a minute or few before before this starts flowing. I suspect. Oh no, no, no! It has started flowing a little bit. So yeah, we're going to be able to pull in a 
at least a bit of the um, a bit of the powdered powder and, and, and get that running. But we're not going to be able to turn it into ingots just yet until we've actually managed to start unloading the vulcanite out of the uh, out of the spaceship. And I suspect, well, actually, the the uh, sulfur is coming out very very quickly. The, we do unload our spaceships pretty quick, pretty quite fast, uh, especially when it's only uh, when when the stacks are only um, only only fifty. So there we go. There's the um, there's the vulcanite that can then come round round down here. It'll be passed up here. And then we should be able to then start making the pyroflux, which means this should start working. And this is all quite exciting because uh, we didn't get to this point in the last stream, so I've not seen this work yet. It'll be um, it'll be quite exciting. Oh, oh no, the, the train has gone again and it is on its way back with another load of um, naquitite because it's now managed to make enough sulfur to refill the train. So that's gone quite. That's gone well, and we've got another fourteen thousand in there, which probably yeah, that's going to be just about enough to refill the train again. So we can unload unla unload that up here. Um, okay, the box is full, but you know you you get the the general impression. And now up here, yes, we're starting to make pyroflux. So down here, we're starting to cook these uh, these ingots. And yeah, we're, we're going to make some steam as well. We'll see how we get on with that. And look, there's an ingots come out. And it's gone into gone round, round the system again already. Um, yeah, there's going to be a bit of catch-up to do here. So you know what? I'm going to head out, nip over there myself. And I'm going to chuck some speed modules in and see if we can get the catch-up to happen a little bit more quickly. Or alternatively, I'm just going to fly straight into the side of my other spaceship. Uh, so, I'd like to put the speed modules in, certainly in you and you, and probably you. I don't think that one needs it. The, the sand isn't going to be uh, that much of a bottleneck. So, yeah, okay, it looks like the bottleneck at the moment is probably the rate we're producing the Iridium Blast Cake at. It's a, this this machine. Um, but each time it runs, it uses up uh, 20 of them, so that's, that's quite a lot. And then we can then get, then get that filled up again. So, yeah, you can see we're getting, we're getting through the, uh, the backlog reasonably well, I think, here. Uh, we'll... Leave that, let that run for a moment longer and we'll just see how it gets on. The pyroflux seems to be absolutely fine. We've filled this pipe up completely. So let's take those modules back again because I don't think that's, I don't think those are required. Down here, yeah, we're still waiting, waiting for the blast cake to fill up over here. The limiting factor does very much seem to be this radiation facility. Um, and that is running, it's running as fast as it can or based on what it's got, on, on the modules it's got at the moment. Um, and it's, it's not too bad. I was going to say it doesn't seem to be using up the, the backlog. I, I think that's not true. I, I think this is probably getting this is probably improving and getting shorter. Yeah, the top the top side is now flowing freely. The the uh, the bottom one is, is it has a bit more uh, backlog to get through, or rather there is less buffer space on the belt because it doesn't have this loop going around the top. So that's not quite caught up yet, but it's very very nearly there. I think after the next load, it's going to then have got pulled all of that through, and this and the system can start running on both sides of the belt. And that now means that all of this is running flat out, which should in theory mean that we're pulling all these belts through almost almost solidly. So, I mean, they're, they're running quite nicely. You can see they're not, there's a little bit of jerkiness on the belts. They're not running quite 100% speed, but I'd say they're fast enough. Now, there does seem to be a little bit of a problem here with the uh, the recycling of the iridium. Um, but now that, that seems to have cleared itself out. And the same down here. So now, yeah, now we have all four belts running in flat out. Now that'll happen until the uh, until the, um, the, the the warehouse empties, and you can see we're absolutely ripping through it. But then the train comes in, and then we start unloading the train, and maybe that'll get that'll fill it. Yeah, that's filling it up just about fast enough that we're we're getting it back in as fast as it's being taken away. So, yep, yeah, that's that's working really really nicely. I'm glad I left this warehouse completely un unlimited because we with the with the naquitite being so um, voluminous, we do need this we do need this rate of throughput. Uh, train's got heading off again, and there is yeah there is already an, enough naquitite down here for it to come and fill some to pick some pick another train load up. The belts are looking a little bit emptier than they were earlier, so I suspect this isn't quite going to be enough. I think I might need to put in a second, um, a, and it might might need to have a second one of these outposts and probably a second train to go out to it as well uh, to stop this to stop it uh, getting sort of to stop it to, to keep to ensure it keeps it keeps running. Because yep, there we go. We've now run out. We've used up all of the available naquitite there. The uh, having one train running back and forth like this is not sufficient to keep this happy. But you know, it's not far off. We're doing we're doing pretty well. And now over here we've got uh, we've got nearly half a spaceship's load. So. That's not going too badly, and everything seems to be working. I think we've got everything working just about fast enough. The, the, all the buffers are dealt with. The system is working pretty much as I would like it to. So I'm I'm very happy with this. I think I will put in a second Naquitite mine, and I'll put in a second train as well, because I designed this to have two trains parked in here. There's there's plenty plenty of space along there, um, and so uh, and I think that. But I think that's probably going to be overkill for the amount of Naquitite we're going to need at the moment. At least for the for the first for the Deep Space Science one pack. Once we get onto Deep Space Science two, three, four, the amount we require, I'm sure, is going to shoot up wildly out of control. But for now. This is this is probably going to be sufficient. Well, I've spent 
quite a long time talking about the Naquium today, but then this is the big, new, exciting and difficult thing that's going on at the moment. So I think that's probably fair enough. I will be back on Monday with another video where I shall talk about all the rest of the stuff that's been going on around the factory. We've been working on throughput of other things, we've been working on keeping the science running, so there's going to be quite a lot to talk about with those. So there's uh, pl plenty more to come back for, so I hope we'll see you then. Um, there won't be any stream and therefore won't be any videos next week because um, I'm, I'm going to be busy all, all week unfortunately. So no stream means, as I say, means, means no videos but everything will con uh, resume as normal the week after so I'll be back on that Tuesday for another satisfactory stream and then on the Thursday for uh, some more uh, Factorio Space Exploration Crestorio 2 where I shall be continuing with the next stage of the Naquium processing trying to turn this crushed stuff into powder, enriched crystals, ingots and, event and eventually plates and then try and turn that into deep space science but you know that's a long way away i suspect it's going to take me more than one stream to get through all of that but i'll see what i can do see how i see how i get on so i hope i'll see you there thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye